the suffering is both emotional. If I can come Does back to you for one that? moment. Does everybody get that? Did everybody just get that? Because that's such a big suffer. moment. Every time she made a mention to hip hop culture, it was something that was wrong with it. And it was something that was on my CD that was the largest debut in hip hop out. The inimitable Oprah Winfrey might be known as the queen of media, having built up a cross-platform empire. See everything from Oprah Radio and O, the Oprah Magazine to Harpo Films and Oprah.com, worth more than a staggering billion dollars. But you might not necessarily expect the talk show legend to be the queen of shade. After all, the TV personality is renowned for advocating kindness, assisting others both in a financial and self-help sense, and for her compassionate interviewing technique, whether she's interviewing members of the public or members of the royal family. And let's not forget all the multiple humanitarian awards she has to go along with all the Emmys. And yet, even a fairy godmother-like figure, Oprah still has her moments. From mocking Hollywood legends and belittling supermodels to political quips and family conspiracies to ruining the careers of those she sees as a threat, the rapper-turned-film producer 50 Cent recently gave a chilling encounter of how the media queen ruined the career of renowned author and spiritual teacher Iyanla Van Zant. Van Zant is an African-American author, TV personality, and spiritual teacher known for her writing, which empowers and inspires people of color due to her terrifying stories growing up. Growing up, Van Zant faced a challenging childhood, overwhelmed with poverty, loss, and abuse. She faced many high points and many low points in her young life, which shaped her to be the fierce black woman she is today. She has turned these moments into life lessons for not only herself, but for the millions she inspires. Van Zant overcame an unhealthy amount of adversity and tragedy growing up. I was an abandoned child living in his home, and I was crying out for love, the author stated when opening up about being assaulted by a family member on her TV show. These traumatic events in her childhood fueled her passion to help and free others. In her early adulthood, recently divorced, Van Zant moved out and attended law school, where she became a public defender in Philadelphia for three years. However, after not receiving the satisfaction she yearned for in law, she took up writing. She wrote her first book titled Tapping the Power Within a Path to Self-Empowerment for Black Women in 1992, which won multiple awards and pioneered her career. Since then, she has written over 30 books covering various spiritual, mental, and ethical topics. One example is Trust. Mastering the Four Essential Trusts, a book Van Zant wrote in 2015, which takes readers through various ethical and moral situations, such as a sibling stealing from you and other family betrayals. In her book, Van Zant asks the question, do I want to be right about how wrong they were, or do I want to find and claim peace? Her second career as an author brought her work, her passion for saving, to the eye of the media, during this course, she met Oprah first as a guest and later as a host on Oprah's famous show. But when Oprah saw that Van Zant was becoming more and more popular, she fired her, and then the writer decided to start her own talk show. But that didn't mean the media mogul would leave her alone. Oprah still went after Van Zant. Years later, the acclaimed writer revealed what really transpired between two arguably the most famous and influential black women in the world. The award-winning author says a breakdown of communication led to the demise of her and Oprah Winfrey's relationship, but marveled at the way the pair were able to mend their bond. The two connected after Oprah read Van Zant's book, In the Meantime, in her book club. Then, the TV host invited the own star onto her talk show in 1998. But when Oprah began G. Van Zant for a talk show of her own, the Iyanla Fix My Life star admitted she broke some protocols, the same things rapper 50 Cent claims Hollywood gatekeepers like Oprah use to control people. I violated some protocols in the industry because I just didn't know," Van Zant, who says she grew up in the hood, told The Breakfast Club back in May 2018. I didn't have a manager. I didn't have an agent. I was going up to talk to people like they were at the key food. And so not understanding that about me and being in this industry, it was assumed that I was leveraging, which I wasn't. I didn't even know what that stuff was. I just asked for what I wanted. Van Zant said she was on The Oprah Winfrey Show doing Change Your Life TV when other networks began approaching her. That's when she started thinking of doing her own show. However, she wanted to do it with Oprah. But when Van Zant approached her about it, she said it was ill-received. I was just being naive and stupid and asking, but it wasn't received well, Van Zant explains, and that created a breakdown in communication. But we were able to repair that. It took 11 years. They didn't think I was ready, but that was never communicated to me. So, I'm saying, well, if they asking for me, why can't we do it here? 
The life coach left O's show to do her own at ABC, which ended up getting canceled. Some industry insiders firmly believe Oprah had everything to do with the show's cancellation. Then, the former lawyer spent time working off air. After she and Oprah worked through the breakdown 11 years later, Van Zant, who was welcomed on The Oprah Winfrey Show during the final 25th season to air out their grievances, joined Oprah's Life Class Show. But the billionaire mogul told Van Zant she needed to get her own program. Thus, Iyanla Fix My Life became a staple of the Oprah-founded Owen Network. On that show, she's tried to help celebrities get their lives on track, including rapper DMX, reality star and rapper Hazel E, and actress and model Karuesh Tran. After the latter's episode aired, Tran told The Angie Martinez Show that she regretted going on the program. I was confused, I don't know, Tran said in 2017. I think the way it was translated might not have been the best. It was a weird thing because afterward, I felt like I wanted to K myself, not literally, but I wanted to just get in bed and not look at my phone, but then a lot of women said that they loved it. Meanwhile, her manager, Jacob York, claimed Van Zant was bullying his client and that the life coach fake pretends she's trying to help people, a claim later made by the family of victim Camilla Mobley. So, was she being instructed on what to do by Oprah? Were those the same reasons they fell out the first time they tried working together? We'll find out more. After Tran's episode aired, fans also lashed out at Van Zant, claiming similar things. But Van Zant had a different interpretation of what happened on the show. They came to us. I didn't come to them, she responded. There's no locks, there's no gates. We were in her house, she didn't put me out. They came to us thinking that to be on my show was going to push her to the next level. And then, when they got there and realized that I don't play, I don't do publicity and marketing, and when I asked Tran some hard questions, York wanted to pull it out, and they wanted to craft and construct what I did. Here's the truth, I walked out on her, she continues. He pulled her out of the room and said he didn't want these questions, and I left. They had to talk me back, that's the truth, but I don't have any issue with Karuesh. I don't think at that time her management was in her best corner, but look where she is now. Another tense interview Van Zant conducted was hers with late rapper DMX, a man well known for exposing the industry gatekeepers. Just like Van Zant, DMX's talent was undeniable, but in the wake of his death, more was revealed about his troubled childhood and how its lasting impact. Fans are familiar with his long history of substance abuse and his rehab stints. X was open about his addiction, and it was clear during his appearance on Iyanla. Fix my life just how bad things got at one point. Van Zant says despite X's mishaps, he was an anointed spirit. X appeared on the show in 2013. The purpose was to address his estrangement from his eldest son Xavier, who refused to be in communication with his father due to his father's addiction issues and the poor treatment of Xavier's mother. As the show progressed, it was clear that X's addiction and rage were overpowering. During the reunion between X and Xavier, the rapper became irate when he felt that Van Zant was coaching Xavier on what to say. He was also angry, believing Van Zant continued interfering in their conversation instead of allowing the father and son to talk. X later blew up at Van Zant, yelling many obscenities. He later told TMZ, Iyanla set the whole thing up to make me look bad for ratings, adding, That lady is toxic. My last words to her were that she can my D and she still can. So again, was Van Zant acting on behalf of Oprah, who clearly despised X for exposing people like her? After X's appearance on the show, Van Zant vowed to never work with him again. For her, the disrespect was too much, and she did not foresee him getting to a healthier place with so many enablers around him. X revealed in 2019 that he was open to returning to the show for a do-over. Van Zant was not open to the idea, but later admitted that she believed she failed X by not approaching the sensitive situation differently. In the wake of his death, Van Zant spoke highly of X as an artist and as a prophet, telling The Breakfast Club hosts in a recent interview. He was anointed, but he had never been consecrated, meaning that his anointing had never been honored and recognized, and unfortunately, he was rewarded for bad behavior. Despite their rough time together, Van Zant says X was a gentle giant, and she admired his dedication to his faith. I saw the soft sides of him when he talked about his grandmother, you know people don't know that, and he could pray the pain off the wall. He was so anointed, he's resting, and he left a powerful legacy. All in all, people believe Oprah, after refusing to let Van Zant work how best she knows, later contracted her and instructed her on how to mishandle celebrities, something that has clearly worked against the author. She is now among the most disliked people in the industry, all thanks to her style of interviewing her guests.
Just recently, the trained lawyer claimed that she wants to give men advice on how not to be deadbeat dads. Take, for example, Nick Cannon has often received criticism for having 12 children with six different women over the last 15 years. People have wondered how often he sees his children and if he financially supports their mothers, living in separate households. But the funny man has also been accused of being a deadbeat dad, a term he completely rejects. However, he recently sat with the author and life coach, and the two spoke about therapy as well as Nick's philosophies about his life choices. I don't think a father is deadbeat if he's not allowed to be in a relationship with his children," Van Zant implied. But if he has the capacity, and he has the ability, and he has the responsibility, and he doesn't? Too many of our young girls are, you know, ravishing themselves with drugs and S and all kinds, because daddy never tucked them in at night. Van Zant went on to say that men should be physically present in their children's lives, not just financially. So for me, a deadbeat dad is a man who doesn't provide for his seed when he has the responsibility to do so, she continued. A man who doesn't walk in his truth. I don't care if he's a bus driver or a grave digger. Let your children know who you are through your presence, not through your pocket. The proud dad has been criticized for having relationships with multiple women simultaneously. Nick has twins Moroccan and Monroe with his ex-wife Mariah Carey, as well as three kids with Brittany Bell, sons Golden Sagan and Rise Messiah Cannon and daughter Powerful Queen. He also has twins with Abby De La Rosa, Zion Mixolydian, Zillion Eyre, and a daughter Beautiful Zeppelin. The 43-year-old also has a daughter with Lanisha Cole named Onyx Ice Cole and a son, Legendary Love, with Brie T.C. Cannon also shares two children with Alyssa Scott. The couple had a son, Zen, who died at just five months old from a brain tumor. They also share a daughter, Halo Marie. Five of Cannon's children were born in 2022. The Wild N Out creator previously told the Los Angeles Times that he has been villainized for having so many children with so many women. But the remarks are water under the bridge because he said he makes an effort to be present for all of his children. I've been villainized, he said. I hear all the time, you can't be present for all those children. So therefore, I get this deadbeat dad title. So do you also believe that Oprah is using Van Zant to express her agenda across Hollywood? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.